Look, my entire existence online is Pokemon. I gotta take a look at this. So over the years, there have been many monster collecting games that have been given the coveted label of Pokemon clone. But none of them were quite able to stand up to the big mouse. And so Pokemon has remained largely unchallenged in the monster collecting genre. But what these other games did not have was guns. Enter Power World. If you've been online at all in the last month or two, you know what Power World is. I pretty much don't use social media, but it seems like even I couldn't escape the constant Power World discourse being shoved in my face. Everywhere I looked were equal amounts of people saying, oh my god, Power World is so much better than Pokemon, it's the future. No, Power World bad, it has stolen designs. And so, Pokemon with guns is at number two for all time concurrent players on Steam at over two million. As of late February, it has over 25 million total players. At least 7 million of those are on Xbox, on which it is free on Game Pass, but still, that's more players than basically every Pokemon release, except Sword and Shield, barely, and Red and Blue, which are games with two versions. It's a big deal. Pokemon fans everywhere are shaken. But even before release, there were plenty of people not thrilled with Power World. And the scariest accusation of all, the game is AI. But fear not, AI's not all scary. Let's see what Opera's new AI assistant Aria has to say on the matter. She's here to answer the important questions. She has spoken. Aria is very wise, and she can do more than just answer questions. You can use the highlight tooltip feature to translate text on the spot, or to give you more information about the highlighted text. Okay, let's give it something super obscure. Can it tell me about the Pokemon game for the Coco Pad? Bear in mind that there was pretty much no information online about this game prior to my video on it, so this is a really mean question. Let's see what it gives us. Wow, I'm actually really impressed. It's not even like it's just regurgitating stuff it's seen online. It comprehends it and adds extra context. That is legit really cool. The Opera browser has even more cool stuff though. It's got an inbuilt VPN and an inbuilt ad blocker to remove all those pesky ads. Except on my videos. You can turn it off on mine, that's okay. My favorite feature is the tab islands though, because I'm constantly swimming in open tabs. You can just close them. Well, maybe I don't want to. Maybe I need to have eight tabs researching electric blankets. Well, now I don't have to deal with tab overwhelm because I can sort my tabs into neat little collapsible groups. This one's got my work stuff in it, and this one has got everything I don't want to close, but might need later. The sidebar also has an integrated music player. It can even have text apps like Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp built into it. It's just ridiculously streamlined and everything's all in one place. You can try Opera out for yourself by using my link down below. But for now, I'm going to heed Aria's wise advice and look a little more into Power World. I will get to the actual game itself and have a play around in it, but again, my channel is literally Pokemon, so this first section of the video is basically just gonna be, is Power World a big mean Pokemon clone? And the answer is yes, of course it is. But it's like a yes with an asterisk. There are absolutely questionable elements about this game's design, which I will get into, but in a general sense, I do think that whenever some sort of creature collecting franchise pops up, as Pokemon Pokemon fans, our gut reaction is to just start hissing and dismiss it as a filthy Pokemon clone. I remember back in the day, we were scared that Jibanyan and Yokai Watch was going to be the thing to dethrone our precious electric mouse. Yokai Watch wasn't even a Pokemon clone, just a game that featured creature collecting. The design direction they took could not be mistaken for Pokemon's at all. It was just a creature collecting game, and Pokemon don't own the concept of collecting little guys. All that said, Power World has committed some serious naughties. As someone who likes to do art things, I was curious as to how bad it could be. At a glance, there are quite a few of these designs that I'm vibing with. We got a cute little moth, this really pretty cat fox mage thing, and Chillet is just a perfect being. He and Furret would go on the best walks together. But it doesn't take long for you to start double taking at some of the pals. Like, huh, that's a familiar color scheme. Is that one's face just a shiny Lucario? Oh, this one's literally just Lycanroc. It's the secret fourth form. It's Twilight Lycanroc. In reference to this one in particular, I've seen people saying stuff like, well, there's only so many ways you can design something based on a wolf, so of course there are gonna be some similarities. And sure, there are elements to making a wolf creature that are gonna be pretty universal. It's probably gonna have four legs, a couple ears, a tail, 
But I think that argument kind of underestimates R. Like there's basically an infinite number of directions that you could take a design that's just based on a wolf. You don't have to take it from me. Just Google Wolf Fakemon and look at all the amazing designs made by fan artists over the years. And the thing is, I could not find one that bore more striking a resemblance to Lycanroc than Diahel. Again, I don't really want to send the wrong message, like one person or one company can't own the rights to make a creature based around one thing. One time I made a little fake one based on a kingfisher. His name is Rabik. I can't just take that and be like, no one else can make little guys based on kingfishers, it is mine. Like, I don't own the basic concept. But if someone came along and posted a kingfisher that blatantly looked like mine, but with a few small changes, hey look, this is my 100% original Pokemon, Rubik, I'd be a bit miffed. Maybe a better example might be the pal Penking, a big, real, Napoleonic-looking penguin. Definitely the same basic concept as Empoleon, but it's a different execution of that concept. You can say it's an original, that's fair enough, but it's not really plagiarism and probably wouldn't get very far, legally speaking. There is a limited amount of animals to base creatures on, so of course there are going to be similar concepts. But the problem is, I can look at other franchises touted as Pokemon clones. Yokai Watch, Nexomon, Temtem. But I look through these selections of monsters and I genuinely struggle to draw parallels with their designs like I can with Pal Worlds. It goes way beyond the loose comparisons of like, hey, there's a fox pal and a fox Pokemon. Plagiarism. It's more like, this is a very specific shape that I recognize from a Pokemon design. And I keep seeing these specific shapes. A good amount of the pals look like they've had little bits chopped off Pokemon designs and sort of mashed together. Like if someone presented Dinosum to me as a fan-made Meganium and Gudra fusion, I'd be like, whoa, that's amazing! What a great blend of those two Pokemon. Then you realize it's from a game that has no affiliation whatsoever with Pokemon. There are just too many examples for it to be a coincidence, in my opinion. On a similar note, I've seen this image making the rounds a lot, as if to say, while well, the original Pokemon designs were copied from Dragon Quest, ha! I mean, I know literally nothing about Dragon Quest, but really? Like, to me, the only one that holds up is the Omanyte looking guy, and that's just because it has a somewhat similar color scheme. I feel like this is where the whole argument of, oh, well, there's only so many ways you can design a bat would be valid. Look, I don't know, I'm not trying to protect my dearest Pokemon company, they don't need some YouTuber to fight their battles for them. Maybe I'm just not seeing something other people are, but it feels like a real stretch to me, especially next to a comparison like Verdash versus Cinderace. Examples that make you legitimately question if assets were pinched to make it. But these are just a few examples. There's over a hundred pals, so I made a naughty's tier list, which I'm gonna show you real quick. I know there's been a few of these, I haven't watched any videos because I don't want to accidentally plagiarize someone else's plagiarism list. I've made five tiers of Pal World Design Naughties. There's the Wonderful Creature tier, which just has all the pals I really like. It's just full of wonderful creatures that need to be protected. We've got the Just a Little Guy tier. Pretty self-explanatory. Just very inoffensive pals. I've seen quite a few of these ones picked on, like Kativa or Pangolet but I don't really see it. There's the can I copy your homework tier. This is where it starts getting suspicious. You've got more specific concepts like penking, still not plagiarism, but very fair to call it on original. Or little lamb ball. Now did Pocket Pair see that Wooloo was very popular and think, how about we have a round sheep guy too? Probably. But Pokemon can't take them to court and be like, you made a round sheep, that is forbidden! In this category, we're starting to see the familiar color schemes and little shapes here and there that I recognize. Like, Robin Quill has the same loose concept and similar color scheme to Decidueye and has Blaziken's legs. There's the three Eevee lookalikes, this Giratina looking thing. <laughs> Next up is the Getting Dodgy tier. There's only four in here, so we'll look at all of them. We've got Shadow Beak, which is just a black silver ally. They didn't even give it different law. In game it talks of how it's this artificial chimera type Pokemon and it even has the Arceus arcs on it. Good lord. There's Azurobe, this superior Milotic Primarina fusion thing. I don't know how accurate it is, but if that hair comparison thing that was going round is authentic, then yikes. There's the Wonder One color scheme on this dude. Cabalion would destroy him in a fight, I'm sorry. Foxicle's cute. It still looks like Alola Ninetales' long lost sibling. 
and there's the potential lawsuit tier. Notice I haven't put many in there, but the ones that are in there are just beyond debate. This is a grass type cinderace. This is a meganium and gudra fusion. This is a lichen rock. This is the dog with shiny Lucario's face. So with all of my expertise, I have found, surprisingly, most of the designs seem original to me, but the ones that are suspicious aren't subtle about it. Bear in mind this is just based on official Pokemon designs. There could be similarities between pals and Fakemon or creatures from other franchises, I don't know. I only really know Pokemon. I do swear that the pal Daisy looks like it's come straight out of Steven Universe though. <laughs> the thing is that the questionable choices go beyond Pokemon designs though. Parts of the UI are just strikingly similar to Legends Arceus. Like, I know you can't copyright a circle, but it's just when it's all put together Together side by side like this, it doesn't do Power World any favors. I've also heard a lot of people saying that perhaps AI was used in some way to help create all the pals, which is really funny because people were saying the exact same thing when Scarlet and Violet came out. These new Pokemon suck, they look like they came out of an AI generator. This point gained traction because the CEO has previously spoken favorably about AI and Pocket Pair also released a party game utilizing it, complete with these octopus crewmate dudes. I don't feel like that's massively convincing, so I took my time trying to get to the bottom of it. I went back, watched all the pre-release trailers, and documented every single unique PAL that I could. So between 2021 and 2023, there were four trailers I could find, making for a total of 62 unique PALs, which is over half of the entire PAL deck, most of them being revealed in either the 2021 trailer or the January 2022 one. There's a problem with that. Do you remember AI really being a thing back in 2021? I don't. The first image generation models weren't publicly available until late 2022. AI image generation models only really started getting good in 2023, so I'd be very surprised if they were utilized for anything in this game prior to that. In my opinion, at least half of the PALs couldn't have feasibly been made using AI. That being said, there were more trailers. There's one from December 2022 which shows nine new designs. Again, I still think this is possibly a little early to have involved AI, unless you think they were made using those super crunchy Pokemon generators from that time. The most recent trailer was in June 2023. This one showcased a whopping 30 new designs, the most of any trailer. Now this was less than a year ago and AI was definitely capable of producing professional quality stuff at this point. It moves quick. Then sure enough, this final trailer has plenty of suspicious PAL designs. It's got the Alolan Ninetales, the Garchomp guy the grass cinderace. <laughs> so could AI have been used for some of these more recently shown designs? Maybe, I don't know. I don't think it's quite as simple as, hello AI, please give me a new fire type Pokemon. And then it just spits out this perfectly rigged 3D model that you can just paste into the game. If that's how it worked, everyone would be making their own Pokemon game. Maybe it'll get to that point soon. I would really not be surprised with how fast it's moving, but we ain't there. If it is a part of the process, I'd imagine it'd look more like someone asking the AI, give me a fire type Pokemon, and it gives them something super jank looking which they then rework into an actual design. There are also image to image models which is where you can give it an image and it will directly use it as a base for whatever it spits out. I don't really know how it would work but I think most people can agree that the concept of say, feeding an AI model a picture of Lilligant or something and giving it a command like, please take this and change it just enough so I don't get sued would be pretty lame. Again, I don't know enough to say if that could be a possibility for some of the PALs, but just based mostly on vibes. Since you can see questionable PAL designs dating back to a point way before generative AI was a thing, and we don't know when the later PALs were even designed, the game was in development for three years. I'd lean toward any dodgy design stuff being human choices. I have to stress again that this is based upon what was available at the time. I'm sure this whole section won't take long to become outdated. If you're gonna go after PAL World for something, I think the actual examples of likely intentional human copying make for a much stronger case. And by you, I mean the Pokemon company will go after Power World for that. You can feel however you want to feel about the game, but if you're one of those people that thought it was all cool and good to go and send threats to the developers at Pocket Pair, then you suck. If there's a case, the Pokemon company will deal with it themselves. They put out a statement a few weeks ago saying exactly that. Alright, that's basically everything I have to say about the designs. Maybe I should you know, play the game. So what is our region called? Can the Banto. This is the Banto region. 
Pocket Pair have clearly been listening to Pokemon fans' grievances about all the tutorials and how long it takes you to actually get into the game. Here they just drop you in with no context and have you figure it out on your own. In fairness, it's much more of a survival game than an RPG, so they don't really have any story or characters to introduce. But come on, I didn't play Pokemon to spend the first hour going back to school. I think the best analogy I've seen for this game, I don't remember exactly where I read it, was that a way to summarize Power World would be that it's basically like one of those crazy Pokemon scam ads that you'll see floating around, where you go and download the app and it looks nothing like the ad. But this time it's actually real. Not 10 minutes into the game and we discover that this is a land that has few humans, as they've all been eaten by pals. Acquiring pals is entirely the same process as in Pokemon, weakening them and then throwing a Pokeball, uh, pal sphere when their HP is low. But I don't know, it kind of hits different when I personally have to physically beat this little defenseless lamble right out the gate. Beating up wild animals is all well and good, but you don't want to do it to people because that's called assault and you will get chased. For once I'm actually seeing a consequence for mindless violence in video games. I always loved flaming money bags in Spyro and he'd just sit there and take it, but not in the banter region. You can also acquire new pals through eggs, which you can get through breeding, or you can just find eggs in the wild. You can just steal an egg right from its nest. You've just stolen this little lift monk's firstborn child. Apologize! Having randomized eggs in the wild is honestly a stroke of genius because it makes me way more invested in trying to complete the pal deck. My little child brain has to know what's in it. And since you have to incubate them and wait for them to hatch, like I might as well explore more of the Banto region while I'm waiting. The names for the pals are spot on. Some of my personal favorites include Fwak, Depresso, and Sui. Every pal has its own unique cry. Listening to them, of course I'm looking for similarities to Pokemon and I might have found a few. Like we've got Snivy and Beegard. <coughs> or Mudbray and Melpaka. <coughs> and Kativa's, I swear, sounds like that stock cat meow sound that you hear in every film ever. <coughs> Alright, okay, this is very last minute. I was looking for something to watch while I finished the last bit of the video, so I just stuck on this cat documentary and listened to this. It's the same! It's the same sound! I could really be reaching with the other few cries, but I think they sound kind of similar. There are plenty of cries that are really great, though. I find Tansy's really funny for reasons I can't explain. You know, I'm really getting into this. I, I like how most of the map is obscured and it sort of reveals itself as you explore it. You realize you sound like someone who's never played a video game. Ever. I've played games. What games have you played? Pokemon? Animal Crossing? Spyro's Adventure for GBA? Do you recall this ancient meme? I'm an e-girl who plays video game starter pack. That's you. Legit, I have genuinely been enjoying it though. It's very Moorish. I'll be like, okay, I'll stop playing after I find the next quick travel point. And then I see on the navigator that there's another new one nearby and that turns into me playing for another two hours. All the little chests scattered around the world are little dopamine hits that keep me going. I definitely wandered around areas that I was probably way too underleveled for. But every time I find a chest and get some items that I probably shouldn't have had access to, but who's gonna stop me? It's a lot of fun roaming around, but I'm so used to my atmospheric music in Pokemon that I really miss it. That is something that Pokemon have always got pretty spot on. Though Scarlet and Violets has that one melody that seems to be playing at all times. A new feature in Scarlet and Violet was material drops. When you catch something, it'll drop cute little items to help you make TMs, stuff like Meowth fur, Wingle feather, Inkay ink. How old has this too, but it doesn't hold back. Lamble mutton, chickpea poultry. Just if there was any doubt whether this pal that you beat up was in fact deceased. Pokemon have always been a bit coy about whether or not people canonically eat Pokemon. Like the worst thing they had was the Slowpoke Tales, which to be fair was pretty dark. In Gen 2, there's almost this black market trade of seven Slowpoke Tales. But then they backtracked on it more recently, saying that actually Slowpoke's tails just naturally fall off and grow back. Doesn't harm the Slowpoke at all. But Powerworld leaves no nuance. It's like, yeah, you can eat pals. Here, have a Lamble kebab or a nice juicy mozzarella steak. It can't be said that Pal World doesn't know its audience. It truly does not mince words. For example, when a pal breaks out of its sphere, it says, Lambo broke out of the sphere. She keep it. Incredible. I wasn't expecting British expletives going into this experience, but I appreciate it. I feel seen. 
if you'll see, like, there isn't an entire Pokemon region based on the UK. There's more, though. The Paldex Paldeck entries are just incredible. Long ago, this pal used long objects like tree branches as weapons. After coming into contact with humans, however, it found something much more effective. Guns. Sniffing its scales produces a feeling of unparalleled euphoria. There was some effort to further regulate this byproduct, but the Free Pal Alliance has vehemently opposed these measures, putting a stop to them. Cinemoth over here just casually creating an illegal drug trade. It has all the things Pokemon fans have been wanting for years. You can buy and sell pals on the black market. You can create a production line with inhumane working conditions and work your pals to the bone. Oh, and you can make guns! guns. This is what I have always desired in my pocket monster game. Oh wait, this one is specifically Liftmonk's submachine gun. Look at him go! What a cute homicidal little guy. You can use some of the actual pals themselves as weapons too. Like Fox Parks can be used as a flamethrower. Toko Toko can launch its eggs as bombs. And with Jolt Hug, you just yeet the whole thing and he explodes. Thank you for your sacrifice. Loads of the other pals can be utilized in different ways. There are so many riding mounts, flying mounts, hang gliders. Some pals have specific items you can make that'll provide unique benefits when they're in your party. I've always loved random Pokemon having very specific uses. Like how you need Relicanth and a Wailord to do the Reggie puzzle. Or how some Pokemon in Gen 6 have unique surfing models. It's just an extra incentive to try out some guys that you might not have considered otherwise. Honestly, I wish they had one of these for every pal so they've all got some extra way to be used in the field. I just think it's neat. With there not being much of a story, all lore is given in tidbits through journal entries that you find scattered around. Some of these are golden. Most of them are written by a mysterious castaway and tell the tale of their many adventures. This one tells of how he murdered a dude. It's not like I killed anyone directly. There's no one to blame here. Then he finds a chicky pea and skins it to make fried chicken. <laughs> I know a lot of Pokemon fans have been a little frustrated with the more recent entries to the series, for reasons ranging from Dexit to a lack of post-game that you don't have to pay more money for, to the actual graphical quality of the game itself. I've never really cared that much about how realistic my trees in Pokemon look, but Scarlet and Violet certainly had its fair share of visual quirks. In that regard, it's quite funny because Power World is really no technical marvel. I frequently encountered issues where textures failed to load properly, or even worse, sections of ground wouldn't register as ground and if I walked into them I'd be sucked into a void. This happened a lot, to the extent that if I were not patient and didn't need to pay the bills, this probably would have made the game unplayable and I might have just stopped. It did add an extra layer of difficulty. I had to take great care navigating certain spots lest I fall into the void never to return. From what I've read, this is a bug that only affects players on Xbox. Look, you can make fun of me for playing it on an Xbox, but I got it for free, so I'm laughing. You can say what you want about Scarlet and Violet's glitches, but at least from my experience, it didn't have glitches quite this game-breaking. They were mostly just funny. Like a random Sprigatio stuck in the door. He's not harming anyone. It's not really great for any game to be having significant graphical bugs to this degree, but I suppose the point is that Pocket Power an indie team of 50 people, plus freelancers, and Game Freak make the games for the most profitable franchise in the world. There's also the argument that Power World is still an open beta as opposed to a fully released and polished title. I guess some games stay in open beta for years now, so I, I don't know how much of a difference that makes. I think a lot of the hype around Power World is almost to spite Game Freak because players have been so frustrated the past few years. Like if there had never been a national dex cut and fans were truly happy with the new games, then I imagine there'd probably be a lot more pushback against Power World than there has been. People see a game that in their eyes fixes some of Pokemon's long-standing issues and innovates, so of course they eat it up. In fairness, there are elements of Power World that Pokemon would never be able to incorporate. They aren't gonna give Rowlet his own machine gun and you're not gonna be able to make your own little Pokemon sweatshops. I'm generally quite easily pleased when it comes to Pokemon releases, but even I could see where people were coming from with Scarlet and Violet. But hey, ever the optimist for my dearest Pokemon. Maybe this whole Power World thing will have a positive impact. A bit of healthy competition, if you will. There's no rush for a new Pokemon game this year, and next year's Pokemon ZA looks to be another new direction for Game Freak. Apparently the whole game takes place within one city, so I dare say I have my hopes up. But for now, my travels across the Banto region have come to an end. But the saga continues. Pocket Pair have shown that they can compete with Pokemon, so who knows? Maybe this will usher in a new era of games in the genre of collecting little guys.